The topic we'll discuss now is how do you unit test Spring based applications? As we discussed earlier, all the code that we would be used in using in this example is present on GitHub. So you can go to the repository github.com slash in 28 minutes and you would have a repository by the name spring in 28 minutes. There are a lot of projects in here. The specific example which we would be using in here is the real world example. This is the project which we will be using in this particular example. If you are interested in setting this project and getting this started and doing a hands-on session, there's a video explaining how you can install all the examples of this particular tutorial in here. You can click the link, watch the video and set all the examples up. The specific example that we would be using in this particular video is two real world example. Developing testable code before the emergence of the Spring framework was very difficult. Actually, 10 to 15 years back, almost nobody did testable code. One of the prime factors in developing testable code, I mean the testable code becoming so popular in the recent days, is the dependency injection feature which the Spring framework brought in. In this video, we will look at multiple ways that you can do unit testing using Spring Framework. We have examples in this project on how you can use a Java configuration. So this particular example here uses a Java application context. How you can specify the configuration of an application context in the Java file, Java code itself. So this uses a Java application configuration to load all the dependencies and execute the unit test. That's the first example we would be looking at. And also this uses a stub of a dependency. So we kind of use a data service stub to run the example. What you see on the screen right now is the crux of the example that we are going to discuss. So this particular real world example is kind of everything in this picture except for the web layer. So we have a business layer talking to a database layer and we have a to-do business service which is talking to a to-do data service. So the to-do data service is a dependency of the to-do business service. The focus in this particular example is to write the unit test for the to-do business service. So we want to write the to-do business service test. That's basically a unit test for the to-do business service. There are multiple ways that we can write unit test for to-do business service. One of the ways is to use the real implementation of the to-do data service, talk to database, get the data and completely write the unit test. Actually, in that particular situation, it would no longer be a unit test, but it would be almost like an integration test because you're talking, the business layer is, business service is directly talking to the data service and the data service is talking to the database. So there are multiple layers involved and it's no longer a unit test. What would happen if the database is down? The unit test fails. What would happen if some data in the database changes? So you are expecting two rows to come back, but there are three rows in the database. So all these kind of things cause a problem when we write unit tests connecting, multi, I mean, which run over multiple layers or connecting to external systems. That's the reason why we don't want to reuse the real IMPL of the to-do data service, but we want to use a stub. So how you can use a stub to run the to-do data service? I mean, how you can use the stub to run the to-do business service test. That's one of the things which we'll be looking at in this particular example, in this particular video. We'll also look at how you can run the same thing using a mocking framework. So instead of a stub, I mean, instead of creating a separate sub stub file for to-do data service, there is also a possibility of using a mocking framework like Mockito to run the whole thing up. We'll also give you a link to where you can find further information of how you can write unit tests with, with Mockito. We need a spring context to, load, to run the unit test. And the spring context can be defined in two ways. One is XML and the other one is Java. We would also focus on that during this video. The first example we'll be discussing uses a Java application context. So the application context, application context configuration is defined using a Java class and also we'll be using a stub. So what we'll do is for the data service, um, we have a to-do data service stub. So this is the to-do data service stub, which is written a list of to-dos. And you'd see that everything is 
starting with the stub to differentiate other data. So what we want to use, do is we want to auto wire the to do business service with the to do data service stub and we want to test this particular implementation. So if you look at the specific business logic that we would want to test what this to do business service IMPL we want to specifically test this method retrieve to do's related to spring. So what this does is actually it gets all the to do's and then filters everything that has spring in them. So if the description of a to do contains spring those are the ones which are returned back by this particular method. So retrieve to do's related to spring it talks to a data service to get all the to do's for a user. So what it does, I mean, if we auto wire things properly and we are able to get a stub to be auto wired in here, if, to be auto wired in here, and then we test the business logic. So our aim is not really to test the to do data service, what it's doing. What we want to test really is whether this business logic of filtering the things which are related to spring is working fine. So if you look at it, we want to filter everything that is related to spring. And this stub is writing one, two, three rows. But among these, only one and two are related to Spring. So when this particular business method works fine, even though the tools which are returned from the database are three, or from the stub are three, it should filter the one which is not related to Spring and it should return two rows back. And that's the test that we are writing in here. The to do business service Java stub test, if you look at it, let's just directly go to the test first. So what we are doing is, business service dot retrieve to do's related to spring. What we are doing is we are invoking business service dot retrieve to do's related to spring and we are checking if the to do's dot size is two. There are multiple things which needs to be happening for us to be able to successfully execute this particular test. Let's look at all of them. First thing which needs to be happening is we need to use, uh, we need to run this test. We need to run this test using spring. How do we tell this test to run with Spring? That's the first question. So how do we tell the test that, hey test, go and run with Spring Framework. How do we tell that? That's the first question. And next is how do we tell Spring to use a specific configuration? How do we tell Spring to use a specific configuration? That's the second question. The third question is how do we auto wire the business service in here. We want to auto wire the business service, right? We don't want to create an implementation of the business service directly here. We want to auto wire the to do business service. How do we do that? The fourth one is how do we auto wire? I mean, we want to auto wire this stub and not a real implementation of the data service. So how do we auto wire a stub and not the real implementation? If you look at this particular project, it also contains a to do data service IMPL in the real world code. So this is the business IMPL, but if you look at the data IMPL in the real world, it also contains a real IMPL which talks to the database. We don't want to talk to the database. We want to use the stub. So how do we tell, how do we auto have the stub in and not the IMPL which talks to the real database? How do we do that? Those are the four questions we'll try to answer right now. So the first thing is, how do we tell the test to use Spring? First thing is in the pom.xml, or if you look at the dependencies of this particular thing, we have a framework called Spring Test. So the Spring Test is the most important thing to be able to run this unit test. So the first thing what we would do on the unit test is specify something called at run with. So we are saying run with Spring JUnit 4 class runner. So this is what says use Spring to run this example. And what Spring to use is specified by using the context configuration. What Spring configuration to use? What Spring context configuration to use? And that's what is specified by using the context configuration. And here we are using a Java context. What context are we specifying? We are directly specifying the context in here. The way we say something is a context is by having an annotation at configuration on it. So the at configuration makes this class a spring application context configuration. So if you look at this thing, it's in the org 
Spring Framework Context dot annotation. That's the package in which this particular configuration is. And in the configuration, we are specifying a couple of packages that we would want to scan because we want to load only these particular things. And actually, whatever you specify in here is the key thing in making sure that we are loading the business service and the to-do data service stuff. So let's look at it in detail. So if you look at this particular package, com in 28 minutes example, layering business IMPL, we want to load the to-do business service. So which package is the to-do business service IMPL in? If you look at it, it's in this particular package, business IMPL. And that's the first package we are saying to component scan. So what we are telling uh, Spring is look in this particular package for the components. And that's what we are saying in the configuration. So in the configuration, we are saying do a component scan on this one, business IMPL. That's one. And the other one is we want to load the to-do data service stub. Where is the to-do data service stub in? The to-do data service stub is in com in 28 minutes, example layering data stub. So this loads the to-do data service stub. So this is the way we are saying Spring, these are the components. So whatever is in these two packages, so what is in this package is the IMPL. What is in this stub package is the service stub. So we are auto wiring the stub into the, I mean, we are making the components available and we are specifying the right annotation. So if you look at this particular thing, we said auto wired business service. When Spring does a component scan over here, it finds only one matching thing for to do business service, which is the to do business service IMPL. And inside the to do business service IMPL, there's a dependency on to do data service. And there is only one to do data service, which is on the component scan path, which is to do data service stub. And that is how the stub is loaded and not the real uh, IMPL. If I wanted to load the real IMPL, what I could have done is specify the package of the real IMPL. So instead of specifying here the data, instead of specifying data stub in here, instead of specifying data stub in here, if I specify data IMPL, then this is the thing which would have been loaded. And we would then be really testing with the real implementation of the database and not this stub. So that's, uh, I mean, that's quite a tricky thing to understand. So basically what we are saying is we are defining what are the components to be loaded using the component scan. And you should make sure that only the real, you only the things that you need for the specific context. So here the context is a test context. For this test context, I want to load the IMPLs of business and the stubs of data. So that's the reason why uh, this particular Thing would be running against this tub and not against the real code. Just to make sure, let's run this test. And you would see that uh, the test ran fine. And also you'd see that the to-dos are printed in here. And if you see the to-dos, the to-dos have a description with stub. So these are really picking this stub and coming back with the values from this stub. So that's how you write a unit test using a stub, using Java application context. The same test I could have run with a XML context. How do I do that? The only change would have been to use instead of in the add context configuration of the previous one, we specified classes is equal to spring test context. Instead of that, we can specify locations is equal to the XML, which you would want to load. So if you look at the XML here, the XML contains uh, the XML contains the component scans definition. So the difference between this particular thing and this is that here we define everything in a Java class. So everything is in the Java class. In here, we are defining everything in an XML. So we are defining what should be in the context in an XML. And we are loading, we are telling this particular test, which is XML stub test to use that particular business application context to run. That's the only difference. So here we are specifying the component scan and component scan is part of the Spring application context configuration. We are specifying that in an XML. And here in the earlier example, we specified it in a Java class. So 
That's the only difference between using a Java context and using an XML context. Other than that, rest of the test would remain the same. Now, if I don't want to use a stub and I want to use a mock, I can use a framework like Mockito. How do you write a test with Mockito? Uh, there's an example in here to do business service Mockito test, which would be a real good example to go through to understand how it's done using Mockito. But I would also recommend uh, to go through the complete Mockito tutorial, which the link to which you'd find in the description of this particular video. The Mockito tutorial covers all the features that are there in Mockito and how you can run unit tests with Mockito. If you are new to unit testing, I would also recommend you to look at the JUnit tutorial, the link to which you would find in the description of this particular video as well. Hope you had a good time learning Spring in this particular tutorial. You will find more examples about dependency injection, inversion of control, Spring modules, JDBC, aspect-oriented programming, MVC, and a lot of that kind of examples on our Git repository, as well as links to a number of video tutorials. You'd find a list of more than 10 videos which you can look at to understand Spring even more on the GitHub repository. What's stopping you? Just go down there, look at all the examples and become an expert on Spring. And by the way, do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.